what, what are we, in this case, are we spreading out X direction, or are we spreading out Y direction? X direction. Why? Because X is first. Okay, so what we know is that we should have this looking graph, like the, the Dumbo look, the big ears. They kind of look like ears, right? Well, to me, I have a pretty good imagination, so to me they look like ears. So if we know we're spreading out this way, are we going to have any y-intercepts? No, no. Are we going to have x-intercepts? Yes. Yes. How do you find your x-intercepts? Square root of 4. Square root of 4. Why 4? Why, why are we looking at the 9? Because there's no y-intercepts. Yeah, there's no y-intercepts. We just have x. We know that whatever comes first, that's giving us our intercepts. Are we 2, 4, or 16? What do you think? Two. Two. We're at 2. Okay, so the x-intercept plus or minus 2. We're going to be centered at 0, 0. Of course, if you weren't centered at 0, 0, you could still do that, right? It's just, it'd be just like uh, doing that, that whole ellipse thing that we just covered. So here we're centered at 0, 0. We have 2 and negative 2 making our markers for the x-intercept. And we can go ahead and draw our hyperbola this way and that way. Raise your hand if you're okay with that, that graph. Now, have you been wondering what this number does? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, do you want to see what it does? Mm -hmm. Sure. Here's what this number does. According to an ellipse, that would give us y-intercepts, right? Or, or the spread along the y. Now, of, of course, we don't have y-intercepts. Here's what that number does. Here's what b does in this case. Uh, what number would we be looking for if those were y-intercepts? What would we have? So the y-intercepts would be plus or minus 3. So we would have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Do you agree that if this were an ellipse, it would cross at 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3? Mm -hmm. okay. Here's what this does for hyperbola. That still makes a difference here, but this is what it does. What you do with those numbers, you get, see, this, this figure is exactly right. Right now, this looks like a parabola, and this looks like a parabola, doesn't it? It's looking like two, that's, these aren't parabolas. Here's what these actually do. What I want you to do is erase this. What you do with your A's and your B's, you actually use those to make a box. So make a nice rectangular box around those. Here's how you do it. Okay, so let, let's recap. Can you find your x-intercepts? Mm -hmm. Sure. Can you find your y-intercepts, even though you don't really have y-intercepts? Mm -hmm. Now, what's kind of nice about this, this gives you the shape of your hyperbola inherently with this box. What you're going to do, the, first of all, are you okay with your box? Mm -hmm. What you're going to do now, make a diagonal line that goes through these corners, make a diagonal line that goes through those corners. Or it looks kind of cool, right? Like something out of Star Wars, like a TIE fighter? <laughs> no, that would be X-Wing fighter. Oh my gosh, I made a faux pas according to Star Wars lore. That's horrible. Are you alright getting your diagonal crosshairs across your graph? Yeah? This is how, so uh, according to this, yeah, you'd still have a B and a negative B. But what that does, makes up a box for you. And makes up diagonal lines. Here's how you use that to your advantage. You see, this right here tells you the shape of your hyperbola. Now, you already know it's going to be here. Because we already drew that graph, right? I just erased it. You already know it's going to be here, it's going to be here, and it's going to go this way. You follow? These lines give you what are called asymptotes. Hyperbolas are asymptotic to those lines that you drew through your box. So you, you go like this, and you follow that, and you follow that. That's actually how the hyperbola looks. It doesn't, it's, not, it's not a parabola. It's going out forever like that and like that. It's, it's getting closer and closer to those diagonal lines. Is it ever going to touch them? No. But it follows them. 
Do you guys now see the shape of your hyperbola? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see a lot better with that box thing, can't you? It's not a parabola. It's not the same thing. Otherwise, we'd have called these parabolas and say, oh, there's just two of them. That's not the same thing. Right? They're, they're hyperbolas. They're weird shapes. Kind of nice. How many people understand the idea of hyperbolas? Okay, good. Tell you what, once you try one on your own, we'll do one together, then I'll do that recap, give you your test review, and be done. Are you feeling like a rock star and you understand this one? Why don't you try the next one I put on the board too? We're going to do that just after that. Let me go quickly through it too. Are we able to do that one? Let's take a look at it. Firstly, identify what shape it is. Can you tell that it is, in fact, a hyperbola? Mm -hmm. yeah. What gives it away? The minus. That's kind of nice, right? Minus, you get x squared, y squared with minus between them. Which direction is it going? X direction or y direction? X. X direction. So very similar to this one over here. Make your box up. What is your x-intercepts here? Three plus minus. Good, okay. So plus minus three. And here, for our y's? So we're going to make a box around plus or minus x equals 3 and plus or minus 4 along our y. Which region have you made it that far? You got that box and everything. All right, what do you do with that box? How does that help us? Cross hairs, that's right. Make the X through the through the corners of our box. Now, can can you see that that whether Y or X comes first, you're gonna have some sort of a box, right? It's going to give you the same exact box. What changes is which direction are you going? Are you going the y direction or the x direction? That's why we had to know which letter comes first, our x or y. If our x comes first, we're this way. If our y had come first, you'd have the same exact box, only if you're going this way. Do you guys see that, that on, there, on your graph? So here, sure, we're intersecting here and here because x came first. That means x intercepts, no y intercepts. And we're going to be asymptotic. That means we're going to get really close to those diagonal lines. Ooh, that was a good one. Not bad. Do you have that graph on your paper? Uh-huh. Okay. Kind of neat looking? It'll draw these pretty fantastically shapes pretty easily, right? Not a whole lot of work. Now let's try that one. Firstly, can you identify what shape it is? Is it a parabola? No. That's a silly question. Is it a circle? No. Circle? No. It is? Hyperbola. Sure. What, what gives it away again? 
Minus sign. Minus sign. Yeah, we really talked about that. Now, what do you have to do to get that in the form that you want it to be in? Let's do that. So if I divide everything by 144, we're going to get y squared over 16. Very good. Minus x squared over 9 equals 1. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me what are my x intercepts here as far as the box goes? What are my x intercepts? Wait, why not 16? Because 16 came first. Why, why 9 and not 16? Why does that give me my x intercepts here in this case? Okay, so no matter where the x is, where that x is tells you how far you spread your box out along the x axis. Does that make sense? So even if it's the second one, that still tells you your distance x, uh, right and left on the x. Plus and minus 3. And the y-axis says plus and minus 4. Do you see where the 3 and the 4 are coming from? Mm -hmm. yeah. The 9's under the x, that means along the x, plus or minus 3, that's the square root of 9. 16's under the y, that means along the y, plus or minus 4, that's the square root of 16. So let's go ahead and let's make this box up. We know we're going to be plus or minus, I forgot one. Plus or minus 4 along the y, plus or minus 3 along the x. Here's 3, 3. Here's 4, 4. We'll make our diagonal line just like we did before. Notice how the process is not changing. The only thing you get to determine is what, where it goes. Is it going this way no. or this way? Yeah, it's vertical. Why is it vertical? So we'll go ahead and draw that. The y came first, that means we're spread out along the y-axis. We will have y-intercepts but no x-intercepts. And that's the only way we can draw that. Would you raise your hand feel okay with our hyperbolas so far? Okay. 